action. This is an interesting spot. I'm standing right at the boundary between the domestic and the wild downslope. There's a 250-year-old house overlooking the Delaware River, beautiful gardens, and upslope, this cool sort of ravine over the Delaware River, rhododendrons in flower, very beautiful habitat. We've got stone root, bracken fern, intermediate wood fern, Zigzag goldenrod, wild ginger and Virginia water leaf, wild yam root, and this plant, bee balm. So this is a plant that everybody has in their garden, that you probably have it in your garden. But in New Jersey, bee balm is considered to be an imperiled plant by the state. Six to 20 populations total in the state. And they're almost all clustered along the Delaware River here, south to Bulls Island. In determining rarity, the state is supposed to pick apart what's an old garden plant, what's an escape from an old homestead, and what is a natural population of a native species. Usually people define native plants as plants that were here before 1492. It's an important date, an important definition because of the ecological disruption that followed, but it doesn't really tell us why native plants are important, and they're important because of relationships. They're important because of the relationships that they formed over deep time with other elements of the natural communities that they inhabit. We have this beautiful rhododendron here. We have interrupted fern, maidenhair fern, the wild ginger, purple flowering raspberry. All these are components of a full and diverse habitat of which bee balm is a member of the community. See the bee balm flower? It has these long red tubular corollas with a sweet nectar reward deep inside. You need a pollinator with a really long bill or tongue to be able to access that sweet nectar. Birds see red really well. Other pollinators less so. In this case, bee balm has a deep time relationship with the ruby-throated hummingbird. The hummingbirds are able to put their bill all the way deep into the flower, guided by this lower lip here. Meanwhile, bee balm deposits a little bit of pollen on the hummingbird's forehead, right between the eyes from these anthers here. And when the hummingbird flies to another bee balm flower, that pollen is then transferred to the stigmas, which are also at the top of the flower here. Hummingbirds only exist in North and South America. You'd never have a European bee balm because the evolutionary relationship that molded this flower couldn't exist there. Bee balm diverged from other flowers in the genus Monarda about 600,000 years ago to specialize in hummingbird pollination. That's the kind of deep time relationship that makes a plant native and makes native matter. <laughs> 